In video games, death is all but inevitable, but some deaths are, well, worse than others. Throw on your funeral best because we're diving six feet under to explore the most brutal bad endings in gaming. And just a heads up, some things, once seen, cannot be unseen. Do you ever miss the Dead Space series? We do. There is still a place for that type of survival horror experience, but sadly, EA has left games like Dead Space behind in favor of pushing its sports lineup and licensed titles like Star Wars Battlefront. It's a shame, because all the Dead Space titles had memorable moments that stuck with you. They all had scares aplenty and death scenes that made you pay for your mistakes with a stomach-churning shot of Isaac Clarke losing his life. Like that one from Dead Space 2, for example. You know, the one with the Noontech diagnostic machine. At one point in Dead Space 2, it becomes necessary for Isaac to gather some data from that machine, which uses a needle to extract information from the brain, and Isaac requires said information to continue on his journey. The problem with the machine, however, is that Isaac needs to remain calm in order for the Noontech's needle to insert properly. The slightest bit of panic will cause the machine to malfunction, and if you are unable to properly guide the needle toward Isaac's iris, things go badly. Lara Croft has bitten the dust in a number of Tomb Raider titles, but the more recent games have really taken her death to a whole new level. The Tomb Raider reboot trilogy slaps an M rating on Lara's adventures, and that means a whole lot of blood and guts, a slew of curse words, and Lara dying in the most painful ways possible over and over. It's basically an interactive snuff film. In Shadow of the Tomb Raider, the third game in the trilogy, Lara meets her maker in some particularly disturbing ways, but none are quite as stirring as watching her get impaled. Here's a gist. Lara is out there minding her own business, raiding tombs as usual, when some ground suddenly falls out from under her. The player only has moments to react, and if things don't work out, she's going to fall into some deadly hazard. So what's underneath the rapidly disintegrating ground? Why, a pit full of spikes, of course. Lara's tomb raiding days have been brought to an early end. Sure, it's tough to watch, but it's not the worst of her potential fates. Remember this gory gem? <laughs> While the story beats in Red Dead Redemption 2 are out of your control, you can still have an impact on the game's main character, Arthur Morgan. If you roam the West like a true outlaw, putting down everyone in sight and stealing when you darn well please, Arthur won't have a lot of honor by the time you reach the game's conclusion. If you save all the outlawing for the bad guys and generally do right by the people of the world, Arthur will end the game with high honor. Two paths for Arthur Morgan to take during his time on Earth. Two ways for Arthur Morgan to ultimately meet his maker. If you end Red Dead Redemption 2 with high honor, Arthur Morgan can take his dying breath while staring at a beautiful sunrise. A fitting way to go out for a man who tried to change what he'd become. Unfortunately, the low honor version isn't so pretty. Damn you. Damn us both! If you run roughshod through the world of Red Dead 2 and live like a monster, you'll die a monster's death. Micah will either stab you in the back, literally this time around, or he'll shoot you point-blank in the head, cackling over your corpse. It's your call. I've lived a bad life, sister. We've all lived bad lives, Mr. Morgan. We all sin. But I know you. <laughs> you don't know me. Heavy Rain is a narrative-driven game that comes with a multitude of branching story paths and outcomes, so naturally, there are going to be opportunities for you to both succeed and fail. You'll make one choice and progress through the game one way. You'll make another choice and take an entirely different route for the rest of the adventure. Or you can fail in your execution of a choice and say goodbye to your character. In Chapter 34 of Heavy Rain, you're playing as a character named Madison, who either lives or dies depending on the choices you make. One path enables you to get in and out of a villainous doctor's home quickly with information you need. Another results in you being knocked out, coming to only find you're fastened to an operating table, with that doctor preparing to operate on you in a way that can only end badly. From there, you can escape and kill the doctor, keeping Madison alive. But if you don't... <laughs> when Resident Evil 5 arrived in 2009, some lamented the game's very existence. After all, it seemed to signal a full transition for the franchise, one away from the series' horror roots towards a more action-heavy experience. But don't let that spoil you on the game entirely. If you're all about blood and guts, Resident Evil 5 still has that. There are still evil things that require killing and evil things that want to kill you. Up on Danny. Whoa, whoa, what? <sighs> what you want with Tolerian dumb? Yanji and that too! If you want a video game or a movie that focuses on grotesque violence, you look for one with a chainsaw, and Resident Evil 5 has one. 
your foes waste no time attempting to snuff out your last remaining bits of life with said chainsaw, separating your head from your body in the process. And take it from us, that prospect is not pretty. Man, talk about a pain in the neck. Who said this didn't belong in the horror category? Spec Ops The Line contains one of the best shooter campaigns in recent memory, and spoilers ahead, it has to do with a pretty major twist. The main character, Walker, has trouble coming to grips with the fact that his actions led to the deaths of a number of innocent civilians while trying to carry out his mission. So, in his mind, he creates a scapegoat. You'll go through most of the campaign believing you're on the right side of the battle. You'll think that you, controlling Walker, are the good guy. When you reach the end, however, you'll discover the truth. That scapegoat, Conrad, was dead all along. And it was you, not Conrad, who was killing all of those innocent people. You'll come face to face with the hallucination of Conrad conjured up by Walker's mind, and you'll have a decision to make. Shoot the vision of Conrad and refuse to take responsibility for your actions, shoot a reflection of Walker, which in effect is shooting yourself, or allow the vision of Conrad to shoot you, which is also, in effect, shooting yourself. If you shoot Conrad, you can walk away with your life. If you let either one of the other two scenarios play out, however, you die by your own hand. It's an unsettling end to an amazing game. Resident Evil 2 was known for its guts and gore back when it was released in 1998, but the 2019 remake takes things to a whole new level. Zombies are a whole lot scarier, for instance, and Mr. X, he is a walking nightmare. <laughs> While the gameplay is awesome no matter what, you won't get a true sense for how far things have come unless you die. Depending on who you are and how you go down, you might get to see a group of zombies tear into your flesh, pulling out your organs while you scream. And once they start munching away at said organs, blood splashing everywhere as the life drains away from your character, only then will you appreciate the work Capcom put into this updated version of RE2. It's strange to go back and look at the older God of War titles, now that the 2018 release has captured an entirely different feel for the franchise. But those prior games paved the way for Kratos to become something more, and they're definitely worth experiencing if you haven't played them. If nothing else, they were more unapologetic in the carnage that Kratos spread across their worlds, and in the deaths Kratos would meet if he failed in battle, like in God of War 2, when it looked like Kratos and Zeus would do battle for the last time. Toward the end of the game, Kratos and Zeus meet once more, with Kratos imploring Zeus to, quote, release him from this torment of his life. Zeus picks up his sword, and a quick time event prompt pops up. If you press the corresponding button in time, Kratos blocks Zeus's sword blow, setting off another scuffle between the two characters that ends with Kratos sawing Zeus's belly to bits. But if you don't quite get to the button in time, Zeus swings his sword. As for Kratos, see for yourself. Your torment is just beginning. Catherine is such a weird game. It honestly is more like a girlfriend simulator than a straight-up horror game. It's also a puzzle game and a platformer. And there's a branching story in there, too, with multiple endings based on the choices you make. Oh, and the horror. The main character Vincent has nightmares where all sorts of madness take place. They can be pretty terrifying at times, like when you're trying to platform through a level while being chased by a pair of monstrous hands holding a giant fork. We told you this game was weird. Vincent must navigate giant towers with all sorts of moving blocks, trying not to off himself as he makes his way to the end. And that's not even mentioning the giant fork. All the while, the giant fork hovers nearby, stabbing toward the tower in an attempt to kill Vincent where he stands. If Vincent is able to keep moving, pushing blocks around, and maneuvering around the tower in the right way, he can survive the nightmare and make it to the next morning. If not, he's forked. End of story. There sure are a lot of Resident Evil games on this list, aren't there? What can we say? Resident Evil set the standard in terms of scary monsters and immense amounts of gore. No matter where you are in a Resident Evil game, you can be just around the corner from death. And in Resident Evil 6, there are enemies that want to kill you so badly, they'll kill themselves in the process. Like the Rascal Punji you run into by the meat market. Remember him? In Resident Evil 6, Rascal Punjis are terrifying because they can essentially put themselves back together. Blow an arm off? No problem, it regenerates it. Shoot off a leg? It replaces it. It's incredibly difficult to kill one fully, but if you head into RE6's Butcher Shop, you have a chance. You'll struggle with the creature, and if you succeed, you'll feed it into the meat grinder, destroying it entirely. If you're not so lucky, however, and you lose the fight, the monster will send you both tumbling into the meat grinder. And we thought being eaten alive was a crappy deal. 
Check out one of our newest videos right here. Plus, even more SVG videos about your favorite games are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.